to PT Dance Instructional Videos. Today what we're going to be having a chat about is the order of training. I see way too many people doing cardio uh, first before their weight training and it's a big, big, big no-no and uh, let me explain to you why. What's the main fuel source your body goes for in resistance training? So when doing weight training, what's your body's primary fuel source? Apart from those of you who are scientists and sports scientists, apart from your and triphosphate, etc., uh, what's the main uh, fuel source in your bloodstream? Well, it's carbohydrates and sugar. So the main thing your body wants to burn is stored muscle glycogen, aka sugar. So, if your muscle tissue uses this as a fuel source, and if you have it in your body, obviously you're going to be very strong. So, doing your weight training first is therefore a really good idea. Now that you've gone through your workout and you have burnt up a high percentage or all of the stored muscle glycogen in your body, uh, now you can go do your cardio. And when you're doing your cardio, because you've got no stored muscle glycogen left in your body or no sugar in your body, your body's got no choice but to now burn fat more efficiently. So now you get a great uh, strength training workout and you get an amazing cardio workout. So again, if you understand that, why should we not do it the other way around? Well, if you do your cardio first, now you're starting to burn up a lot of sugar. You're not burning much fat if you start doing your cardio first. Um, and then if you start doing your weight training afterwards, you've got no sugar left in your body, so you're extremely weak. Uh, you're not going to get good results, and the chances of uh, increasing uh, risk of injury dramatically increases. So what we really want to be doing is uh, going into the gym, doing your weight training first, and then doing your cardio after. So let's be a little bit more specific because there are other things we also need to do in your workout. So the first thing you need to do when you come into the gym is I don't consider this cardio. I consider this just a simple warm-up. See, basically what happens is, as you've been sitting around at work or at home or in your car to get to the gym, your skeletal muscle tissue isn't under an intensive workout. So your body takes all the blood from outside of your body and puts it back internally in your organs. Just doing three minutes of walking, your body now sends the blood from internally, sends it back outside to your skeletal muscle tissue. So it only takes about three minutes in order to do this. So you just do three minutes of walking. So this is you when you first come into the gym. Three minutes of walking on the treadmill. Now that you've gotten all the blood from internally to your skeletal muscle tissue, now you need to put it directly into the muscle that you're going to be exercising. So say you're training uh, chest on day one. Your first set is high rep. When you do a high amount of repetitions and the muscle tissue is continuously contracting and releasing, your body will send a lot of blood into that area. So your first set is your warm-up. Notice, we haven't stretched yet. If you actually stretch before you do a resistance training, um, so if you stretch out your chest, your chest muscle will send a reflex action to your brain telling that muscle to relax. Uh, that actually decreases strength. The first set, if you do a high reps, I'm talking 15, 20 reps or plus or more, uh, that'll increase enough uh, heat and elasticity that's equal to doing a static stretch. So it's, static stretching or holding a stretch pre-training, pre-weight training is not a necessity at all. In fact, it'll probably take you backwards. So after this, you go heavy. So this is where um, you want to lift to failure. All the time I see people doing 10, 12 repetitions and then putting the weight down. Hey, if you can do that, because you've just done 12 reps and put it down, so your body can do it. If you can do it, why are you going to get stronger for? Why are you going to get bigger for? You're not going to get results that way. But if you go to failure, then what happens is that your body says, hey, I can't do this. So it adapts to its environment and your body repairs this muscle tissue bigger and stronger and this is where you're going to get results from. So make sure you get to failure. Once you've done all your weight training, so your resistance training is now done, um, now you can go into your cardio. Once you do a cardio, if you dramatically want to increase in size, I don't suggest you do a massive amount of cardio. Uh, probably about 20 minutes will be sufficient enough. 
because cardio is very catabolic. Uh, if you look at marathon runners, uh, they are extremely skinny, not because they've got no muscle tissue, but because they also have no body fat. So they've got no body fat, no muscle tissue, and that's why they're extremely skinny. Uh, we want to get lean and have no body fat, but we don't want to lose our muscularity. Because when you do cardio, your body can't break down fat at a fast enough speed to supply your body with adequate amount of fuel. So what happens is your body actually eats itself to survive and you actually eat away uh, your muscle tissue. So you don't want to be doing too much of cardio if your goal is to increase the hypertrophy. Uh, but if you want to simply get lean, um, then this is a time to increase it to still only 30 minutes. Now, when we do our cardio, we've got to think about which exercises have we just done. So, for example, I strongly suggest that if you've just done a legs workout, you cycle. If you've just done a back workout, you row. If you've just done a chest workout, use a cross trainer. Um, try and pick some sort of cardio that replicates what you have just done. Uh, by doing that, in your weekly training program or your training split, um, you are not hindering recovery. So if I've done legs on day one, day two, I should be recovering. So I don't want to be cycling on that day doing cardio because now I'm exercising my legs. When that, on that day, I should be recovering. So make sure you're smart about what type of cardio you actually use um, in consideration to uh, what muscle you have just exercised on that day. Uh, once you have done your cardio, now it's time to do your core. So core, I'm talking about um, internal, external obliques, abdominus rectus, transverse abdominus, erector spinae, multifidi, and all those muscles in this area that's responsible for uh, balancing coordination and strength. Uh, because if you train that first, you're going to need it here, you're going to need it there, you're going to need it there. So um, the chance of picking up injury dramatically increases. So do all your training and then when you don't need your core, um, smash that out last. Before you leave, stretch. Don't just stretch the muscles you just used. Go through a full body stretch every single day. That way, you're also stretching the muscles during this recovery period. Uh, flexibility plays a massive role when it comes to hypertrophy and size because, as you know, uh, getting nutrients to your blood supply um, and then getting your blood supply to your working muscle tissue is uh, absolutely vital because your recovery period is where you get results. So if your muscle tissue is tight and it's clamping down on that bloodstream, then you are not getting a nutrient delivery to that muscle tissue and it can't recover well. If your muscle tissue is very flexible um, and it's very elastic, that means those muscle fibers are going to be quite loose and you can get a great nutrient delivery and speed up your recovery process and you're going to get much better results that way. So stretch your entire body every single day. Make sure you're as, as flexible as you possibly can. This is the basic ordering of your training program, and this is what's going to get you some amazing results.